Well, here we are again. <laughs> the Christian Union. The Union of Christians. Why is it? I don't know. <laughs> well, today we're going to be painting. We have to do a portrait of the other person while only looking at the other person and then painting to the side without looking. Mm -hmm. Now this is very dangerous because I'm not very good at painting. He's lying, he actually is surprisingly good. It's okay for Gemma because she is actually an artist. I mean, I'm not, but I do like art a lot. But generally when I paint, I look at what I'm painting. <laughs> so this is a new area for me too. And here we go. Yeah. So, here we go. I'm not going to look at Gemma. Wait, no, I need to look at Gemma. <laughs> I'm not going to look at the canvas, yeah. but I'm going to look at Gemma. And we've got a second camera over here to make oh, sure he's yeah. over here can be. This is a painting DIY masterclass. That felt like paper. Okay, we're going to go round. That is a perfect circle. What else are you going to do for a head? Like... A head shape. So how am I going to reach the paints to get more white if I'm not allowed to look at the canvas? You can come forward and reach round. <laughs> I'm now going to go into the hair. Do you know how to make brown? Green and blue. Are you actually doing me? That shape is not anywhere on this. It's going really well. You was, you're going to do the other eye a bit bluer. <laughs> you're going to have to do this. No, but... So now we're going to do some eyelashes. That is a chunky brush. I'm going to just... How many are you going to do? Six. You <laughs> <laughs> look so creepy. Nose is about here. Was that right? <laughs> yes, that's <was> correct. <laughs> mm. That didn't sound right. I haven't done any eyebrows, but I think we'll pass on that because the eyelash is going to be so big. You're not going to give me eyebrows! Okay, fine. <gasps> so, I think it's complete. Hello. Oh, funny words. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this is terrible. Do you think anyone would see that and be like, oh, that's Gemma? Yeah. From an artistic point of view, I'm like, that could be considered some good modern art. I think it's good. Do you? I'm nervous that now I'm going to do it and I've picked this up. I've been very, very mean. Good effort. Hello. Here we go. <laughs> Time for Gemma to be humbled. Oh, this is really difficult. Remember how you have a really good mental map from the uh, blindfolded <laughs> oh, video. <laughs> this is hard. I get underestimated this. I'm doing it around your eyes. Oh dear. Oh dear. Right, this will be your nose. Um, here are some sort of smile lines, but not too much because then it just it makes you look old. Oh my gosh. My eyebrows are very straight. Thank you. That better not be my eyebrow. This is your hair. It feels like I'm tickling your chin. <laughs> Why would you say it like that? Oh, you've got ears too, for goodness sake, Connor! Don't ever ask Gemma if you need like any self-confidence boosting. <laughs> because she'll just shout at you for having normal human features. Wow, you've got a funny shaped mouth. <laughs> That was my normal face. What are you trying to no, say? No, it was not. This is look. It watch, was. watch this. Wow, you've got a cartoon now. <laughs> Here she is, everyone. She's about to look at her masterpiece <laughs> of me. <laughs> I kind of like it, to be honest. Everything's sort of mostly in the right space, the right place. But it's definitely they're both artistic styles. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you know what I really like to do? To carry it on, but being able to look. You're going to definitely bin that, aren't you? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I happy with this? I mean, you look slightly dead because of the colour. <laughs> so, um, that wasn't so bad, now was it? I mean, Gemma's painting was definitely much worse than mine, um, as normal. And we have a study for you now, uh, and this one has absolutely nothing to do with what we've just been doing. Like, there's a man in it, so maybe, mm -hmm. maybe that's a link. And we used the colour blue, and the sea is blue. So maybe. Anyway, it's Jonah. <laughs> Over the next four weeks, we're going to go through the book of Jonah in the Old Testament. Jonah is what we call a prophet. This is a person chosen by God to speak for God and to guide the people of Israel. The book starts off with the word of God coming to Jonah. He has a task for him. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. 
Nineveh was a city in the Assyrian Empire, which is here. And from Jonah's hometown in Gath Hepha, the journey should have looked like this. Jonah, however, has other ideas. Verse 3 says that Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish, which is thought to be around here, very far away from where God told him to go. So when Jonah is on the ship to Tarshish, God sends him a great storm to get his attention, but Jonah goes below deck to sleep and to ignore God. The sailors on the ship cast lots to try and find out who's responsible for the storm, and sadly for our mate Jonah, they fall on him. He had already told them that he was running away from God, and so when he told them that this God was the God who made the sea that they were currently sailing on, they were even more terrified. Jonah, then in his next act of defiance, offers for the sailors to throw him overboard so that the storm calms. Remember, Jonah is running away from the task given to him by God, so in him dying by being thrown overboard, he would be unable to complete what God wanted him to do. And so they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. What I find most interesting about chapter 1 is how in verse 16 you see that the sailors, they come to respect and worship God after throwing Jonah overboard. Uh, and even earlier in verse 5 you see how the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. So even though Jonah is running away from what he wanted him to do, the Lord still actually uses Jonah to accomplish something, to, to glorify himself and to make other people come to know him. So can you think of a time when you felt God speak to you, but you just went in the complete opposite direction of that? Or even a time when you did something that you knew God wouldn't like, but you did it anyway, regardless of whether God spoke to you or not. And is there something that you're doing today that you know is taking you away from God and what he wants you to do in your life? So there are some questions for you guys to be thinking about and we really hope that you have enjoyed this video today. So like if you liked it, comment your comments, subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you in another video. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Connor. I'm going to mess up my words all over again. Hi, I'm Gemma. I'm just mean all of the time for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> my brain said, this is upside down. And I was like, oh, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just no, awesome. it is upside down. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, yes, it is. It's not. Oh, That's your hair. Look. <laughs> well, I could turn it upside down. Is it making any better? I kind of does. <laughs>